good evening guys and uh, welcome back to my channel i have uh, not done what i should <laughs> i'm not uh, done with my um, covers yet so uh, we are still uh, not uh, putting it together but i also need some more pages so um, i thought we could maybe make some more botanical uh, pages for the journal so i got a lot of uh, comments on these that i made but uh, sadly enough there are a lot of people that think it's too difficult to draw and uh, they don't think they can do these pages so um, i decided that uh, yes you can <laughs> so we are going to do this another way today so that you still can make your own botanical drawings by some help so um, take um, some kind of stencil that, it, that you have that is a little bit botanical uh, it can be flowers or it can be some kind of uh, grass or ferns or you can even use some bigger stamps if you have and that way i will show you that you can draw your own botanicals with a little help from a friend <laughs> so this is an ordinary copy paper uh, 110 grams so it's a little bit thicker than uh, I think it's 80 gram or maybe 90 on uh, that so-called ordinary copy paper. So it's a little bit heavier. But uh, that is uh, not so important because we are going to use um, some gesso later on and make the paper sturdy enough. But uh, let's start. So by making... Uh, some fun ferns I'm uh, going to start with the stencil but do it with some uh, distress ink this is water <coughs> water soluble so it will blend with uh, the watercolor later on and uh, you can use the color that you are going to have on your flower when you put it down like this so you make sure that uh, that you can uh, get the color you want so um, i'm putting my stencil as i want it and uh, just using a clip to hold it in place and then i'm lightly going over it with uh, some ink just lightly so I can see where I have the petals on the fern not anything that is heavy or sharp just as a little help something like that I think that's enough so uh, this way you have a fern that you can draw and you can still uh, make it personal and unique by uh, using an ink pen. And now you don't need to draw it yourself but you can still make it more fun than a stencil. So uh, now I'm going to draw around this. So uh, I'm just going in with my pen and kind of loosely making this look like a fern. You don't need to draw every single little piece. That way it makes uh, your brain work a little more and you 
the brain will fill in the parts where you haven't drawn. It also looks like a more like a sketch. And uh, then you can also do like this. You can make your fern grow or you can make your fern be a little more fun than the stencil make it. That way in an instant minute you have a fern that is a little bit more special. Just by draw the lines a little bit more than the fern is done already. And we are not going for anything neat and especially follow the line. We are going to make a nice fun fern by playing. And as you see, I'm not following the lines. I'm quiggling and take my pen and draw a bit around and near where the stencil have uh, marked. This way you get some movement in your picture and you can do double layers of uh, petals that makes it look a bit more new natural and you get another kind of movement in it. This way you get a unique and a beautiful fern that only you have in your journal and in your life. Like that. So don't be afraid to have fun and uh, just loosen up and draw the lines. Okay, another way is of course to, uh, to draw and uh, follow the stencil on uh, the inside like the stencil it is, but instead of uh, using the ink you kind of draw around it and I'm doing the same here I'm not drawing all the lines uh, totally follow every little step I'm doing some of them and some of them I leave open in uh, the edge so I can do my own edge on the ferns I will show you. What I'm talking about.
like this. Now you can see that I have followed the lines and I made myself something to follow, but I can still go and make kind of my own shape on the leaves or the petals. And make it a little bit more natural looking. Not so perfect and and the same here I can kind of bend the petals a little bit so they get different shapes. And make them a little bit more fun. And you can still see that it's a fern and you can play with it a little bit more. Like so. Right away when you cross the uh, petals and make them look like they are behind or hanging down or more straight up, it makes it uh, like it has a movement. So the next step is to put gesso on top of this and that's because if you have put gesso first this uh, micro pen won't stay in place. It will follow the watercolor away from the paper. But by doing this first, you're still going to have these lines when you are going with the watercolor. You can make it straight on the paper. I will show you. This is painted uh, without gesso. So it works and uh, you can dry it with uh, your iron later. This is still wet. I just wanted to show you that you can do it like this too without gesso if you don't have any. But uh, then you uh, need to be a bit careful with the uh, color under it. So because when it not noticed gesso the distress ink will sink in and uh, it's not sure that you are going to get it off. So like this you can see that it's still behind. So I think this is uh, the best way to do it but if you don't have any gesso you can uh, do it like this or take some white acrylic paint with water and put on top of it. That works as gesso too. Gesso is actually some acrylic paint. So, uh, as in uh, the uh, cooking programs on TV, I have uh, prepared some <laughs> already, <laughs> so I can show you right away. So I made two different ones. I will iron these later because uh, the gesso will get softer and uh, you can um, straighten them up a little bit so you don't need to have them so buckly. It uh, gets soft and nice. So uh, when you iron it, make sure you have a parchment paper on top or iron it on the back. The gesso will uh, bloom up if you have too hot. So uh, be careful when you have gesso on. You can iron but uh, low temperature and something between the paper and the iron.
So this way you can uh, play with uh, making your own botanicals and uh, get this uh, beautiful own painted pieces that you can uh, play with. And uh, this is on old book pages, but uh, so that works too. And uh, this is uh, some white acrylic on top of this. So uh, that works. If you rather want some text behind it. I uh, thought it could be easier to see if I uh, did it like this. So now we're going to use our watercolor and make these pages a little bit more fun and i think they are a bit boring when they are white so uh, i'm also going to paint a bit on the background of uh, the paper so uh, some splatters and uh, some colors just to make them a little bit more fun and uh, i'm going to start with that So I'm going for some water. And I'm going a bit around these um, botanicals. And I'm just going to dab in some color so it's not totally white. some brown and some black and uh, I'm sure there are some places where I haven't put any gesso and uh, that will uh, show up but uh, it will dry later on so you won't see it so well So I'm going all over the page, also on top of the ferns. And then going in with some color for the background. I have some blue and some brown. Just so it's not so boring. If you want it white, leave it white. It's totally up to you how you want it and what color you want on your botanicals. This will marble a little bit uh, later when it dries. As it's uh, just so it will float a bit. Splatter on some clear water like that. Then uh, I'm uh, going with uh, my smaller brush and I'm going to go with some sap green blended with some uh, Van Dyke brown. Then I'm getting a uh, olive green tone that I like for the ferns. I like that nice color. And then I'm just going in and painting and I'm not neat at all. As we have these uh, black lines, we still have uh, the fern. So you don't need to be neat. And uh, I like that kind of little natural tone when the color floats. And I will also splatter some water on these so it will flow a little bit into the background.
So I'm just roughly putting on the color where I want it. I'm uh, using uh, the blended color, but then I'm going in a little bit with more brown or more green on some places just to make it look a bit more natural in the colors. In nature, you don't have this exactly the same color all over the flowers. You can already now see how the how the watercolor is floating so you don't have this exactly pattern that uh, the stencil have This uh, looks more like you have been out in nature and suddenly you saw a fern and wanted to remember where you saw it and uh, you can do some notes. Splattering some water. Then I'm going to take uh, my circles and I'm going to do some color swatches that will go with this. side it was a little wet still so let's do like this put it on top
and going in with the three colors that are nearly the colors that near the colors we have I have used. This is just for fun and for decoration, so you don't need to be so neat and make it so perfect. Just have fun. I can't uh, say that enough, I think. It took me a long time before I could loosen up and have fun when I painted. I always thought that I needed to do a masterpiece every time. Even if I just painted for myself, I could destroy my, my sketchbook and my papers. So I almost left it and I didn't paint because I was so sure that I'm going to ruin it. So it wasn't any, any idea to do it. So instead of having fun and uh, just paint, I did not paint because I was afraid to, to ruin my sketchbooks. So I'm going to dry this and then we can uh, continue with a little bit more of um, the same decoration that I did on uh, the other pages. It's dry and we can move on with some more decorations. I have done uh, a couple of uh, kind of labels. So uh, I was taking a piece of uh, eco dyed uh, cotton and on top of that a piece of old book page with uh, some eco dyed leaves on just a bit of a pattern to get some layering and then I wrote a name just something that was already on this paper filled it in with my pen I have no idea what it is it's from some kind of uh, wall hanging paper I had them in my shop earlier when I sold interior things and color shark paint so they are old I have used some of them for the eco dyeing now so I have a few of these papers that I just uh, ripped a piece of and used and uh, then I just uh, took a needle and uh, did some stitching. Just up and down. You can sew it on your machine if you would like to have some other kind of decoration on them but I'm just doing some quick stitches to get a pattern Just like when it's homemade, you really can see that and when I have done my stitching you really can. <laughs> I think I found an embroidery needle so it wasn't so sharp.
simple and uh, effective. And I have taken some papers. Thought we maybe could put something on. Something more. I like this uh, piece that was done on a typewriter. the corners a little bit more. Okay, let's see. Maybe like that. That way we can put something behind if if we would like to so let's put it like that get a little talk spot on the page See what I have my spine. It's a little bit big. So I guess it goes the same way.
think this is French. going in and just make this not look so neat. And you can go in and sharpen your lines a little bit now if you would like them to stand out a little bit more. So something like this. You still have uh, some writing space and uh, you can uh, put in something in your little talk spot if you would like to on the pages so uh, maybe not upside down so I hope this uh, will help you to uh, feel that you can uh, do these pages uh, even if you feel that you can't draw so uh, Use your stencil, go and copy something and uh, stencil it in or uh, actually go and draw, doesn't matter. At least uh, you know what it is and you had fun. That's the most important as always, have fun. Thanks for uh, keeping me company today and uh, I will see you soon again. Bye bye from Sweden.